Guys, welcome to another episode of TFL Talking Trucks podcast, and this is action packed. We got a lot of information to throw at you guys, a lot of truck stuff. Yeah, and the main theme of this show is what's the best towing truck? Indeed, and that has to do with our Ike Gauntlet, which yeah. is huge. Yeah, the Ike Gauntlet is the world's toughest towing test. It We've is. been doing it for upwards of almost eight years now. Yeah. 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 And we'll go over some of the heft on results we recently got mm -hmm. and F-150, Ram, and then also GM and Ram heavy-duty stuff. Right. And give you a hint of what's coming up for Ike Gauntlet in the future. That's right. There's some interesting stuff because there's a whole new thing that we have to consider, but we'll cover that in a minute. Yes, but before we get going with our main theme, right, mm -hmm. the best truck for trailering, I want to thank uh, everybody who supports us on Patreon.com. Guys, we couldn't do the shows that we do without you. I mean, that literally, we could not do that. Yes, and TFL Studios has many channels, many websites, but we only have one Patreon page. That's right. And it's patreon.com slash TFL car. And I want to just read a couple of comments from the last few weeks. Knock us out. This, this is just, it'll take a few seconds. Dude, do it. Take your time. Yeah. So, uh, for example, Kurt, who is supporting us uh, in a big way, says, thank you to the TFL team. Really enjoy listening to your podcasts and watching your videos. I've learned a lot. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Kurt. Okay. We appreciate uh, that. Now, Kyle Rausch uh, has a comment here. He's mm -hmm. another supporter. Uh, he's been helping us for ac actually almost a month. Kyle says, well worth it. You guys are the best. Uh, thank you. Okay. And of course, this is going to be positive because these guys are supporting us. <laughs> yeah. Although, good. if you really dislike us, Throw us a couple bucks, and then your statement will still be read as long as it's clean. Yes, yes. If you really don't like us, uh, support us, and then let us know. There's certain competitors out there that might actually consider doing that. After okay. They give us a thumbs down. Okay. Then Kier, uh, who's been supporting us for a couple months, uh -huh. Kier jo Jofers. I'm sorry. That's right. Go for it. Kier Josephson. Okay. Um, says, uh, thanks for the shout out, Andre. Nathan was right. My name is definitely Scandinavian. Oh, that was from the last show. There you go. Yeah. Glad yeah. that we got it right. I'm, I'm thrilled about that. And I messed up your name twice. <laughs> this is why he's reading the names and I'm not. <laughs> yeah. uh, his dad was uh, Swedish, but I was born and raised in the good old Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh! Best football town in the world. Oh, don't get Nathan started on the Steelers. Steelers! Yeah. Um, TJ Powell uh, writes us a message on Patreon. Uh, I find that you have too many channels and outlets. Is there a unified feed of all your videos that you post? Is there a list or links to all of your sites? That's a really good question. Unfortunately, the answer is no. One of the reasons why we have so many channels is because we have so much dat data that we need to get out to you guys. So if we put it all on one channel, then stories would it'll, be drowned out. It'll be confusing. Right. Yeah. So we've been trying to figure this out. I know we have a million channels. We have like, what, eight channels now, technically? Yes, yes. That's a lot, I know. But for instance, our newest channel, TFL Bike, obviously if we took motorcycle stuff that's starting to really come our way and put it on the car channel, that means that one of the car stories would have to be pushed back. Same goes for truck. If we had certain stories that were combined with car and truck, some of those truck stories that you guys are interested in would be buried. We thought about that years ago when we started the Trucks channel, yeah. and that's why we continue doing it today, because we want to separate these things so you guys can have a big choice of what you want to watch. But we do have a couple things that we've done over the years. Yes. So on YouTube, if you go to any channel in the TFL Studios network, mm -hmm. so let's say you're on TFL Now, the news channel that right. we have, um, in that section, in that YouTube page, you can also see our other related channels. Mm -hmm. So if you want to catch something about bikes, uh, trucks, off-roading, or classic, or classics even, uh, you can use those links. And yeah, also, right we, have, we have a new TikTok page account. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. And TikTok is actually TFL Studios. We're not we're not subdividing it by every you know by every channel. So on TFL Studios TikTok account, you will see glimpses of everything. Bikes, trucks, cars, both Ford, Ford Broncos. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about Bronco a little tiny bit in this too. So uh, yes, so um, let's see. So the answer is, unfortunately, we don't have anything that unifies them all into one feed yet. But when that type of tech becomes available on YouTube, or if we can figure out a way of doing it on our own, we will because we want to make sure that you guys have that choice and it's a little bit more convenient because we know it can be confusing. So yeah. we're working on it. Uh, there's a message from Danny Peng who says, 
Thank you. Uh, was not expecting a message. This is on Patreon once uh -huh. again. Uh, thanks, Andre. Keep up the great work. Really enjoy your guys' videos. Say hello to the rest of the team. Well, hello. Well, hello. Okay. And thank you for that. We do appreciate it. Andre is a superstar, but isn't he? Oh, please, please don't. Look at that haircut. Uh, <laughs> Look at that haircut. Well, if you're watching this, please, please. He looks uh, like Clooney. No, no, yeah. no, no. Uh, Christopher uh, Klingerman uh, has just become a supporter. Thank you, Christopher. And this is no messages. This is just recent supporters. Uh -huh. uh, TJ Powell is a recent supporter. Lars Olson is a recent supporter. Michael Erdoli. I'm loving this. Keep going. And Antoine White. Antoine uh, just donated $10 a month, so he's wow. a huge supporter. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, these donations may seem kind of on the small side for some people, like 10 bucks here, 5 bucks there. But if you add it together with like 50 or 60 people, all of a sudden, that's enough for us to get ourselves another vehicle to put into our fleet or to add cameras or even lights which are blinding me right now. That's and also really run this podcast. Run this podcast yeah. and run this company. Uh, remember, nobody, you know, we don't have deep pockets who are giving us money. We have to try to find it on our own. So it really does help. Thank you. Yeah, and by the way, you can also use this uh, as a venue for questions. So yes. if you have a detailed question, please state it, and then we'll get to it in the next show. That is correct. Um, let's get to truck news. Yes, there's uh, a lot. Yeah, because recently Toyota's been on a, just a, on a tear. Uh, the first there was an unofficial leak uh, of the new Tundra. Boy, they, we're not happy about that. Th that was last week. And then uh, they unveiled uh, or released an image of the Tundra uh, itself. Their first official image. Now, uh, that leak came from a dealership when the, and, and it was a crappy picture. And I'm pretty sure that the brain trust over at Toyota is like, well, look, it's already out there. Let's get a better picture out there because this one's crap. And I would agree with you, and I think they did it right. And I feel bad for them because they really wanted to do a big presentation when they, you know, announced the truck and said they have to throw in a just an image, you know, before they're ready. And I, it's kind of sucks. Yeah, and then just recently they uh, actually teased two more, or actually technically three more images of the interior. And this is not the full interior. No, it's, it's just it's, a tease, but we got a lot out of it. Right, it's just kind of the top of the dashboard and you can see the hood. So it's basically the same TRD Pro Tundra that's upcoming. This is the 2022 model, all new truck, right? right. Um, and um, there's a couple of shocking things here. There are indeed. Now before, look, if you're not watching this, if you're listening to the podcast, you will be able to find this on tfltruck.com. And what we're talking about here is a driver's view from the interior of the new Toyota Tundra. So you're only seeing the very top of the dash and the very top of the steering wheel. And there's a couple other things that you can see. And then the expanse past that is a desert, which looks kind of like Death Valley or perhaps the backside of Moab. And that's what we're seeing as well. So just so you know, if you're listening, that's what we're looking at. Yeah, and first of all, if you saw already, of course, most of us have the picture of the exterior picture of the truck. You notice, of course, uh, very aggressive styling and mm -hmm. also the marker lights, the three lights in the grill. Yeah. And the two markers on the fenders, on the front fenders, which is kind of a, tr you know, Ford Raptor started this trend. Right. And now it's continued. TRX is doing TRX it. TRX is doing it. And that's because of width. Also with also regulations. Right, it's required. Uh, yeah, it's required for trucks that are approaching 80 inches in width or more. Uh, so that's why heavy duty trucks have these. Right, so does that mean that we are looking at a very wide toy and a Tundra? We don't know because they haven't released the specs. <laughs> but right. now in this interior image that we're um, discussing, this most recent thing, they put a red marker at 12 o'clock on the steering wheel. Ford started, well, I should say that it started well, with sports cars and racing cars. Yeah, racing but cars. But in terms of trucks, Ford was one of the first automakers, truck makers, to put this in their truck. And they had it even in the first generation Raptor, I believe. Yes. So we're looking at basically the same thing, different color in Toyota. Yeah, and also uh, appears to be a large screen, infotainment screen. It appears to have Apple CarPlay loaded up, uh -huh. and uh, it appears to be pretty high, you know, high definition screen. Maybe even a rear view mirror camera system in the rear view. Right, and there's more too. If you're looking at the top of the dash, we're now bear in mind that we are just assuming this, but Toyota does have some components that have like a squishy foam feel to them. The dash looks like it's molded out of that same type of material. And then if you look at the A pillar, you got a couple things going on, right? Yeah, JBL speakers and grab handles. Oh crap! Uh, on handles. the driver's side and the passenger side. Yes, so. That's something that a lot of people are pretty happy to see because, I don't know, they, I, people use them. Actually, I do too, to get in and out of the truck from time to time, especially if I'm 
like tired and all that. Now, the image that Andre rolled to right now is the image of the interior of the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser, which yes. is not coming to the States, but you already can see some similar components. Yeah, grab handles. Grab handles. Uh, steering wheel, of course, is different. Screen may be different. We don't know. Yeah, but that looks but like the same profile as the screen. Or the that we same saw. width. At yeah, least. exactly. Yeah. My point. So, yeah, so those are kind of some of the news about Toyota. Mm -hmm. We have more on this um, on TFL Truck channel at right. tfltruck.com. Uh, I also want to bring up one more thing. Please. Uh, because Nissan Frontier, the new one. So something interesting happened. I don't know what's going on at Nissan, but leaks are starting to pop out here. It's not a bad idea to leak, especially when you have other uh, truck companies in this case starting to really hit it hard with their uh, publicity blitz, Toyota in this case, and Ford just recently. So Nissan does need to get a piece of the pie, but the leaked photos are very unusual. Yeah, and actually we haven't heard any much about the Frontier, the new one recently. Not since you went out there and looked at the yeah. uh, mock-up, right? Uh, I was actually in San Diego uh, at their design uh, studio. Right. And I did do a couple of videos from there. So, right. But so we was, never got a chance to drive it. And nope. also, I don't, you, you weren't even allowed to crack the hood, were you? No, I couldn't open the hood, but I could climb inside of it. Right, right. Um, but um, our friends at Nissan Nation Hawaii, this is an Instagram account, uh -huh. Uh, have published a couple of what appears to be maybe dealership images from the outside. Uh, this is maybe in the parking lot, right? Yeah, and it's basically a new frontier with a lot of overland goodies. Right. So there's a rooftop tent, and or actually, I should say, a bed top tent. Yes. Yes. That is on a structure very similar to what we did with our Jeep Gladiator when we had it. So you have a foundation that you're able to put the rooftop bed top tent on and it's a pretty big one so they actually show it fully extended and they also show it collapsed but there are also some other images too so this looks like it's a production or near production ready vehicle that a dealership or a specialty shop got their hands on and took pictures of probably before Nissan wanted them to or maybe, yeah, uh, potentially, uh, or maybe this is also the case where Nissan is preparing for their drive event or the launch event. Which would make sense. Which should be at the end of July. Right. So, so it's, it's not about that far a month away. It's about a month away. It's about a month away. Yeah. And, and uh, I believe TFL Truck will be on hand. Yes. Thank goodness. Yes. So uh, we'll bring you all the latest on, yeah. the, on the Frontier. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Frontier is pretty much all new. Uh, granted, the powertrain came out a year ago. That's the 3.8 liter with the 9-speed automatic. It is uh, one of the most powerful engines in this class. And it already has proven to be pretty great in the old truck. Now, this new one has that new powertrain. And then on top of it, it has an all-new interior, all-new exterior, and goodies that we're hoping to hear for about very soon. Totally. Right? I mean, I yep. think it covers it. Yep. And also, well, before we move on to the towing and trailering and the eye gauntlet um, and the truck testing we do, um, I just recently got back from a Ford Bronco event. Uh, this is not related to trucks necessarily, other than the Bronco is also built on the same uh, facility where the Ranger is built. That's right. And they share a similar platform. Yeah, they share some of the frame components potentially. Rear axle uh, and stuff like that. Potentially uh, other suspension components. Right. 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 So uh, that was cool. That's on TFL car. So yes. TFL Car and TFL Off-Road, we have a lot of Bronco coverage coming up. Basically, it's Bronco week. Yes. Leading up to the uh, embargo drop date where they can talk about driving impressions. Yes. But technical, in the weeds, real detailed information coming out right now. And nobody covered it like these guys. It was Tommy and um, this guy here, yes. <laughs> Andre. And they absolutely hit it hard. We have more videos than anybody else. We have more detail than anybody else. These guys worked harder than anybody else. Very well, proud thank you. Of them. It was also hotter than <laughs> anywhere on the planet. I, I, I know. <laughs> and I was looking at the temp. I'm just thinking, wow, they're outside right now for like the next eight hours, yeah. 10 hours, 12 hours. So yeah, very tough shoot, but these guys managed to pull it off. And well, we thank you. Yeah. Stuff. And we loved it. Uh, we loved being there, being hands on, uh -huh. right? And actually seeing these vehicles. Yeah. And, and the actually, Wrangler going up against it and all this other stuff yeah, that we're yeah, going to have. Yeah, totally. So let's talk about a couple of recent eye gauntlets. Uh, eye gauntlets, the world's toughest towing test. Uh, we first coined it. Actually, you came up with this trademark name. Yes, I did. Yeah, I haven't seen a dime from it. <laughs> it's all right. I'm, I'm a charitable man. The most important thing is that this test really is multiple testing all done at once. 
Yes, and it's high elevation test. Right. First of all, that's what ma- really makes it uh, the hardest uh, because the incline of the mountain Eight. interstate, yeah. about 7% uh, grade. Uh, this is I-70 uh, at the Eisenhower Tunnel, Eisenhower-Johnson Tunnel. That's correct. And uh, so elevation is over 11,000 feet above sea level, mm-hmm. uh, eight-mile stretch of highway. And we've been running it and comparing trucks for years. Right. Uh, recently, uh, we did a test uh, that was quite popular. It was F-150 Power Boost Hybrid versus the Ram Hemi E-Torque Mild Hybrid. Right. And we towed about 7,800 pounds. Uh, why 7,800 pounds? Because, I mean, obviously we can go to the maximum, and both these trucks have a higher maximum, but we try to level it out because we also are worried about payload, and we're trying to be yes. realistic about how we do this, and safe. So, yeah, so the Ram was kind of limited on payload in this mm-hmm. case. It was a fully loaded Laramie uh, Longhorn, a pretty, really luxurious truck. Right, right. And the Ford was a Platinum, so both really loaded luxurious trucks, although the Ford had more payload. Right. So Ford is doing this thing that where um, for certain models, including this Power Boost Hybrid, uh, they're doing the special suspension systems and the rest of it to kind of raise the gross vehicle weight. Mm-hmm. And when they do that, because the trucks are getting heavier, right? Oh, it, because oh, yeah. of the batteries, other components. All that other crap that they're throwing in there. Uh, um, they're lifting the gross vehicle weight rating, hence m- getting more payload right. out of it. So, um, And also, this Ram was equipped uh, with a, a, well, kind of efficiency rear axle ratio, which is a 321. 321. And... Uh, well, I didn't know this until we got the truck, right? Because mm-hmm. I was hoping it would have a 390, 391, yeah. which is their kind of a big towing axle, right? Yeah, I like the 410s personally. But well, for a power wagon, right? Yeah! Uh, but this one showed up, and it kind of limited its towing capability mm-hmm. also. So, And that was a big lesson, because if you're looking for a Ram truck, or any other truck, in fact, uh, pay attention to this rear axle ratio. Yeah, or else you're going to be stuck with something that's not going to pull very well, or vice versa, something that's going to get crap mileage. Yeah, or if you have some sort of you know weird dealership saying, you know, buy this truck now, right now, it's a great deal, in trying to get you out the door, make sure you stop them and say, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. How much towing do I have? How much payload do I have? Yeah, and Let, you can open the door and find out. It doesn't take long. Yeah, so find those things out before you actually get, you know, buy the truck and leave. Right. So, uh, and, you know, it's a hybrid F-150. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be efficient as heck. Yeah. You it, thought, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. The, the results were not what we expected. And I remember Andre was pulling his hair out just like, this makes no sense. And... When science doesn't make sense to him, it's it's actually a great moment for a TFL because we get to. Well, watch you saw around. it probably in real time at yeah. the gas pump yeah. in the video. Exactly. <laughs> but now I've made some sense out of it. Okay. It took me a while. Well, first of all, should, should we explain what the results were? To yeah. A certain degree? Yeah. Let's let's talk about it. Um, so this test and this year for 2021, we're also adding a component that you guys have been asking for for many years, in fact, mm. to actually verify fuel efficiency at the pump on the Ike. Which is very difficult to do because, first of all, there are no pumps at the top of the mountain. Correct. Right? And also, you know, it just adds a heck of a lot of logistics because you have to go up and down, up and down, and then find the gas station and redo everything. And it's got to be the same gas station, preferably the same pump, to be yeah. as accurate as possible. But we're starting to do it, you yeah. know, uh, because I know you guys are valuing this data. So, so we're starting to do this. So on the way up... Uh, the Ram and uh, the Ram 1500 and the Ford F-150. By the way, the Ram is a V8. Yeah, V8 e torque. Yeah. yeah, and uh, a Ford obviously is a twin turbo V6 hybrid with an electric motor. Yeah, 10 they, speed auto on the Ford and 8 speed in the uh, Ram. Yep. So they both went up the mountain at the same time. Mm-hmm. So basically, towing 7,800 pounds, which is a fairly sizable weight for like a camping trailer sure. a boat trailer or, well actually just 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 hauling i mean that's pretty that's a lot of weight yeah but it's common right mm-hmm. a lot of people tow about this weight okay right? uh they both went up the mountain and this is a steep climb right mm-hmm. uh with no sweat mm-hmm. uh same time right uh, about seven minutes and 58 seconds approximately plus or minus one and this is a benchmark run basically speed limit all the way up Right. Uh, going just under eight minutes is, that means that you get up to 60 very qu- quickly. And, and run eight miles at and 60. And run your basically. eight miles, at, and, and that is impressive. 
for yeah. both trucks. And um, so that basically means that if you're thinking about towing about 8,000 pounds and you're trying to cross the Rockies and the Continental Divide, modern trucks, you know, have no trouble with power. They mm. have plenty of full power. Not for that much weight, at least. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it. then the trip meters, uh, the, the Ford reported 4.0. This is just for the climb, mm -hmm. right? And RAM reported 4.7. Really? So already we're seeing the computers reporting slightly, you know, quite different numbers. And uh, the RAM uh, is higher. Right. But we also know that those trip computers can be a little off. Which is why we need to go to the pump, right? Right. So now we're going down the mountain because we need to go down back to the fueling station. Right. And I was also surprised. Because I expected this is not a super heavy trailer, right? Mm -hmm. I expected these trucks to be relatively good on the way down with brake applications. And we, we count brake applications, even though Mr. Truck, who is, of course, a big part of this as well. Of course. Uh, what keeps wants, he wants me to use adaptive crews. I don't know what it's what it is with Mr. Truck. I well, you can't do that down the hill because it well, totally changes what we've been doing for years. Yeah, but so, first of all, you can use it while towing, right? Mm -hmm. Adaptive cruise basically maintains the distance between you and the vehicle ahead of you. Using radar for distance. On the highway. Right. And it, what it basically will do is accelerate and decelerate as needed based on distance. Yes. But going down the mountain, it will work as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of trucks are now smart enough to where they know to downshift, right? Mm. And they know to use their brakes and the trailer brakes as well. Right. So it's safe. But there's not a way for us to measure that. Mm. Other than monitoring, you know, light application or plugging in extra computers to monitor brake applications. Right. Or also what it does, some of these systems tend to overuse brakes. Mm. You know, it just kind of rides at brake. Right. So you're going to heat up your brakes, yeah. which could be dangerous you know, yeah. if it's done too long. So we, there, there's not a good way for us to compare adaptive cruise control systems. And another point is that if you're too close to somebody and it, it triggers the brakes... That means that your brake application can't be measured properly like it normally is. Yes. So what we do is we do it manually. Mm -hmm. We're driving normally and we're using all the right modes, tow haul mode, all that stuff. And then the driver um, controls the speed from, you know, breaking it just over 60 miles an hour mm -hmm. down to 50 and see how the truck behaves. Right. Now, in some cases, the trucks will downshift and, and stick to that gear and keep it between 50 and 60, which is a sweet spot for this particular component of the hill or they'll let it run and then we'll have to apply the brakes again once it gets over 60 miles per hour and the whole point here is to judge how the vehicle basically retards the motion as it's going downhill right yes absolutely and i thought both of them would be you know two three four brake applications that's what i was expecting uh -huh. no uh ram did nine brake applications Whoa. and four ten holy cow so uh, that was quite a shocker. You could say they're comparable then. They're comparable in their not so good performance downhill. Uh -huh. Still, everything was safe. There was no brake fade. There was no overheating. Uh, so both trucks behaved, you know, within their parameters. Uh, but I just like to see a little bit better results. Now, better results would be a lot of the heavy duty trucks that we test down the hill. They will do it. They will actually drop that gear. And, and that's coming up. We'll talk about some heavy yeah, trucks. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll see the difference in terms yeah. of brake applications when we get. Yeah, there. you'll you'll be shocked when you, when you look compare heavy duty truck versus half ton. Right. Interesting stuff. Um, so, and the, on top of this, F one hundred and fifty has a battery about one point five kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. This is a hybrid system, and on the way on, at the top of the mountain, and I noticed this during this test, it was um, starting to use kind of regen. Mm -hmm. right because it needs to charge the battery that's correct and plus it has the weight of the trailer you know to help it kind of gain some energy right and it did that and we were applying brake not as often at the top of the mountain but then halfway down it's it looked like the battery you know it gives you kind of a kind of a uh, i don't know like a little graph to show you exactly what it's doing mm -hmm. it looked like the battery got charged oh okay and then that's when most of the brake applications happened so, so it's almost like it, it said, I'm done charging. So then it, it pulled off the resistance applied. To but it was a small resistance. Just a, but, but still, yeah, that's yeah. enough to make a difference, right? Yeah, it, it looked like it made a difference. So the resistance, yeah. I, I just want to explain to them, the resistance that I'm talking about is that there's a little tiny bit in electric cars to this as well, and PHEVs, 
regular hybrids, they'll apply a little bit of brake pressure at certain times in order to get some regeneration back into the battery. And they involve now, the electric motor too. Exactly. Yeah. So in this case, going down the hill means that at first, the truck was actually getting some of that energy back. And then when it was full, it's like, so no, you're done. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and it released. Uh, so it kind of released. So the electric motor can deliver power out uh -huh. or recapture it back. Right. right so right. so it kind of works both, you know, in both directions. And so, yeah, that was interesting. And I was expecting better performance, even though they both downshifted a little bit. Uh, and then we got to the pump and I got the shock. The shock there. Yeah. So what's the what was the damage? so the ram at the pump and this is up and down the mountain, 23 miles. Okay. Uh, delivered 8.5 mpg. By the way, this is an extreme test. Yeah. So so if you're towing on a flat highway, you should expect higher numbers. Right. Um, 8.5 on this extreme test. Ford was at 6.5. No way. Yeah, significantly less. I didn't under, I I knew there was a difference. I didn't hear it before. So that's only like two gallon difference. Two miles per gallon two difference. Two mpg difference. Um, That's and, significant. And here's the other thing. Uh, when you put the F-150 hybrid into tow haul mode, because uh -huh. we're using those modes in both trucks, right, right. Um, it kind of cuts out the electric-only mode. Mm -hmm. You know, in normal mode or eco mode, when you're coasting or cruising, it'll, go to uh, the electric it, it'll shut down the engine and right. let the electric motor kind of handle it. For efficiency. For efficiency's sake, which is, makes sense. Yeah. But in tow haul mode, uh, the engine always stays on. And I think it may be for safety. Hmm. I don't know exactly why Ford is doing this. Uh, but, uh, but I think because they need the engine to m retard, you know, help to slow it down and all this stuff. Right. So it's, it was not efficient tower at all. That is interesting. That is, I, I was expecting precisely the opposite. So in or other at least words, equal performance. Yeah, yeah. So the bottom line is that the Ram, at least with, Overall efficiency going, what, 23 miles up and over the hill a few times. Yeah. Um, pulling 7,800 pounds was significantly more efficient than the four. Quick question. Were both of them four-wheel drive? Yes. Okay. But I think what's happening here is, like I said, Ford weighs a little bit more than the Ram in this case. Even though both are very luxurious trucks. Right. Both are about 71 grand. Mm -hmm. um, the Ford is carrying more weight because it has more mechanical components. Right. Even though they have a light body body components, uh, that's uh, compensated, I guess you could say, by having uh, an electric motor, uh, also the battery, the battery, and all the electric components that go with that. You the know, inverter like, system. The inverter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. exactly. All that does weigh quite a bit. So so maybe that's the case. I mean, it's like an EcoBoost with additional pay, uh, weight. Mm. So. Yeah, there you have it. So that's why we do real-world testing. That is surprising. Yeah. That really is. Well, let's move on because because you teased the heavy-duty truck. Yeah. So then about, well, about a week later mm -hmm. or so, we ran two heavy-duty trucks, and these both were diesel. So now Duramax versus Cummins. Absolutely. And we had both Ram 2500 and Chevy 2500. And we even did a drag race with this. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and we included, just for the fun of it, a, a 7.3 liter Ford gas V8, um, which and, and the results are actually very interesting between the three trucks. I recommend watching that video on TFL truck. Um, yeah. So this this was a Ram. Fully loaded crew cab, 2500 limited, mm -hmm. uh, ninth edition. It had every bell and whistle you can imagine. That also comes with the 10 speed auto, which is Allison no, certified? No, I'm talking about the Ram. Oh, the Ram. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the, the Chevy comes with the 10 speed Allison yeah, yeah. certified I, I, transmission. I, I, it was a um, uh, LTZ, I believe, Z71. So, so it's so. the off road ish kind of truck, but it's not the fully loaded one. Right. Yeah. But the Ram is the fully loaded one. The Ram has the eight-speed auto. The, well, not oh, this no, one. No, this one has the different six, six. six speed six-speed RFE. So right, this is, because this, this is, is the second level engine. Yes. It's not the, the high, high output right. diesel. And that's what I want to discuss too. Ah. Is because Ram is doing a lot of they, they're offering different levels of diesels mm -hmm. in their trucks. Right. And others like GM and Ford don't. They give right. you one diesel engine, one rating. Right one transmission right and maybe one or two gas engines yeah so but in the diesel case um this ram 2500 was a standard output cummins with about 370 horsepower and about mm. 850 pound feet of torque okay and a six speed right interesting uh fully loaded truck pretty heavy truck also right um and then the chevy 
has a V8, right? This is a Diesel. Duramax. Exactly. 445 horsepower, so more horsepower, uh-huh. more torque, 910 pound-feet of torque, yeah, yeah. more gears, like you said, yeah, 10, it's speed. 10 speed, and uh, also a very heavy truck because it's a lo- you know it's got not the longest wheelbase, but still a quite longer wheelbase than the Ram. And it's also 4x4, four, four four, and it's just a lot of extra drag. Both of them are. Yes, and the Chevy also had really aggressive tires. Yeah. Yeah, those really aggressive all-terrain tires. Which are great off-road, but on-road they're not as efficient. Yeah. So we ran both of them, and once again, uh, in my, going into it, I was like, you know that 10-speed in the Chevy should be make the truck very efficient because you have more ratios. Right? Yeah, yeah, and you can go further with them. Yeah, so no, I was wrong, of course. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so what was the, what so happened? so so uh, we were towing about eleven thousand four hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. So we were using Mr. Truck's trailer. His trailer is also a flat deck trailer like ours, mm-hmm. except his is a tilt. So his is like a hydraulic tilt trailer. It's longer, and he's got a heck of a lot of equipment on it. So it's a heavy trailer. Then we put our you know F one fifty or old or old F one oldish. Truck. Yeah, our two thousand four. Right, which is our uh, now our studio truck. Yeah, it's our shop truck now. We put that on there as as ballast. A lot of you guys asked why didn't we tow more weight? Mm. Well, we could have. Yes. But but this is just the, the test was done with about eleven and a half thousand pounds, which is also not a common trailer weight that people tow. Yep. And I expected the Chevy to do better. So both of them went up the mountain at the same speed. No problem with power in either truck, right? Mm-hmm. They climbed up there. Uh, and then the fuel efficiency, the trip meters reported. The RAM reported 4.7. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's the same as... The V8. As the V8 with oh, a lower cool. weight. Yeah. Okay, funny. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then the Chevy reported 4.2. Really? Almost the same as F-150, but the, no matter. It's a different test. Yeah. Um, so not bad. This is just uphill climbing MPG on the trip meter. And then on the way down, Chevy was first. And at the very top of the mountain, Mr. Truck was driving. He applied the brake once, kind of set that um, uh, speed at about 50. And both of these trucks have exhaust brakes. Yeah. Okay. And basically, the Chevy did one brake application. One. At the very top. Yeah. First time he did it. Yeah. And basically, there was a moment where the truck was trying to slow down too much. It went to like 48, 47 miles per hour. So Mr. Truck gave it a little bit of gas. And then, boom, it just maintained that speed. And then the Ram, and this was a little bit of a shock to me also, did zero. So you came out of the tunnel, went up to 60 miles per hour, took your foot off the accelerator, and it's just maintained. Yes, as if the truck knew where we were. That's a trip. But I think what was happening, we were using auto mode on the exhaust brake. Mm-hmm. Um, and as soon as we crested the top of the mountain at the tunnel, uh, Mr. Truck obviously let go of both the brake and the gas. And it seemed like the truck, first of all, senses its uh, angle, right? Mm-hmm. It can, it, obviously, all these trucks now have a lot of sensors. Sure, sure. Um, and it knew that we had automatic exhaust brake on. It said, oh, the driver is, wants me to maintain this type of speed right now. And it did. He never touched the brake. One and then zero applications. That is, that's got to be so. I don't think we've ever done zero before. We've done one before. Yeah, well, so there was one other time with zero applications when Mr. Truck and I did a big Freightliner M2 chassis. Oh, I remember this that This is one, one of, like a semi-truck. Yeah, that and thing is ridiculous. Yeah, so this Ram performed at that level, basically. Unbelievable. Yes. So, so what the bottom line here is that Ram outperformed with both trucks what we expected them to do. And against competition, too. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's surprising. and then at the pump, Ram returned. This is round trip, twenty-three miles. Twenty-three miles. Uh, down nine down. MPG okay. on the Ram and eight point two on the Chevy. <laughs> and you know what? I think if the Chevy had um, the kind of the um, all-season tires, mm-hmm. highway tires, it probably would have matched it. That's what I'm bet. Yeah, I'm betting. because it's um, got those really aggressive uh, mud and terrain uh, tires on. Yeah. It. So that definitely could hurt it. And also, you know, it's, it's fully set up for more off-roady type adventures, so it's got some armor and stuff hanging on it, right? Totally. So, yeah, so it's interesting to see. I really like that Chevy truck. I know a lot of people out there are like, I hate the way it looks. All right, fine. I really enjoyed driving it. I thought it was one of the better driving heavy-duty trucks because they're never would, fun to drive. I would drive. agree. I yeah. would agree, yeah. Yeah, really good ride, very good handling, too. But 
In terms of performance, both the Chevy and the Ford, the half ton, were both outperformed by Ram products. Very interesting to see because I did not expect that. Those Ram products are kind of old. Am I yeah, they're, they're not recently updated. Right, right. Yeah. So, so that, is, that is very interesting to see. And wow. of course, you might be asking, where's the Power Stroke diesel from Ford? Mm, blah, blah, blah. We're where's, for that. Where's the Chevy V8s? You know, where are they? On the, have the, well, there's only so many trucks we can get at a time. Right. And so we've done another iGauntlet that we haven't published yet. Right. And this was um, actually a Chevy heavy. We wanted to do half ton versus heavy duty in one go, mm -hmm. in one test. So we had a F-150 hybrid, mm -hmm. which is actually belonged to me. Oh, it's yours. My, yeah. my truck at You're this blue. time. The blue truck. And then we had a heavy duty and different heavy duty uh, Chevy 2500 uh, with a towing package. And we towed almost 10,000 pounds. So different trailer. Uh, different load, but both trucks are capable of towing 10, and both of them did. Hmm. Okay, and, and you're going to have to wait to hear what happened on that one, which is, by the way, interesting because something unexpected happened. Again. That, that, yeah, again, really not something that Andre was expecting. So you guys have to tune in for that. When do you think that's going to air, roughly? In a few days. In a few days. Yeah, in a few days on so, TFL Truck. Right. So yeah. stay tuned for that. It's going to be interesting. I promise you that. Hey, let's talk about a little bit of what the future is going to bring because we're about to expand, technically speaking, the iGauntlet. Why? Because there are more trucks coming. More trucks. Guys, there are three, well, technically two, two very small pickups I know we're not going to call them trucks that are being built and are about to hit dealerships uh, probably in the next six months. Yeah. And that is the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which is built to tow a maximum of, I believe, 5,000 pounds. Exactly. With their turbo engine. With their yeah. turbo engine. And then the Ford Maverick, which is small, and it is built to tow a maximum of 4,000 pounds. So question is, of course, what would we do with these vehicles on the I gauntlet? Well, it's logical that we would tow probably between 3,500 and 3,750 in terms of weight if we can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, we, and that way we can actually put some people in the, in the trucks and, or sorry, pickups and keep them competitive and get them up and over the hill and see how they do. And then in the future, there's other little pickups that we're hearing rumors about. And we'll probably do another Ridgeline run, too, because the Ridgeline is sort of the bigger version of those two little pickups, right? Yes, and also uh, more hybrid and or electric trucks are coming. Yes, they are. So, so we've got the Ford Lightning. Yeah. Uh, we the also Rivian. Have the Rivian. Technically. We'll see. I'm, I, I'm really getting disturbed by the fact that nothing's happening. Well, they're supposed to be first. Supposed to be. The Hummer is supposed to be out within six months. Yeah, the Hummer, I, yeah. I, you actually had access to that, so that's a very different thing. Um, yeah, so Rivian, we haven't t even touched. That's my point. Yeah. We haven't even touched them. So we, to me, until it's physical, it's vaporware. Uh, also, the, the Cybertruck. Yes. We're expecting to see something like that. So there's a whole bunch of electric and also some PHEVs that are going to be coming along very soon. We suspect that we're going to be seeing some stuff from uh, General Motors on top of the uh, Hummer. That's including some sort of Silverado electric vehicle yeah. of some sort. And all of these are coming very soon. So within the next 24 months, I would imagine, we're going to have a bevy of different types of vehicles tackling the iGauntlet. Now, there are a lot of big questions about that. Yeah. And also, so let's talk about the compact guys. Yeah, let's start there. Uh, just for a second. The Maverick and the Santa Cruz, uh, the, two different approaches, yep. right? When, the Santa, when Hyundai came out with the Santa Cruz, uh, Roman and Tommy were there, right? Yes, they and, were. and they covered this uh, thoroughly on all of our channels. And, and it was just the f they didn't drive it. Not yet, right. No. Um, but they, Hyundai basically said, hey, this is a sport activity vehicle. Mm -hmm. They did not actually call it a truck or a pickup, mm -hmm. in fact. They just said, you know, it's just a little bit more utility in the bed, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's Which is what they foot. did even when they unveiled the uh, concept five years ago, I guess it was. Yeah. And, and, and I get it, you know, this, they don't want to be labeled a pickup truck because that would put them in a different zone in terms of competition. They want this to be labeled as an activity vehicle that has a very large area for cargo. 
Yes, and then Ford kind of did the opposite almost. Mm -hmm. They said, hey, it is a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is unibody. It is, you know, it can have all independent suspension. It is front wheel drive biased uh, system. Well, especially if you get the hybrid because you can only get that with front wheel drive. Exactly. Um, By the way, the same thing, front wheel drive um, um, platform for the Hyundai as well. Yeah, but but that one's on a hybrid. Correct. That's yeah. not a hybrid. Um, and and, and um, they kind of said, you know, we put this truck through rigorous testing, mm-hmm. including some components that came out of bigger trucks, like the Super Duty, like, you know, the tie-down hooks and stuff like that. They said, we tested it to the same standards. And they called the, their off-road version the FX4, which right. is their truck label. You Indeed. Know, and, it, and if you look at, and it's on tfltruck.com, uh, if you look at what we have for that vehicle, you're going to see that it has a beefed up suspension. There's extra armor on there. The vehicle is actually built to do some light off-roading. So Ford is taking it and saying, this is a baby pickup. Hyundai is saying this is an activity vehicle. They're not throwing the name pickup on there. But regardless, the Hyundai is a little bit more like the Honda Ridgeline, which we've tested several times, mm-hmm. and it's an effective use of a unit body does have like a little bit of a subframe underneath the rear yeah, yeah. Um, vehicle. And what's interesting is that uh, Hyundai took the same idea of the uh, in-bed storage, the front uh, runk. Little little trunk in there. It's yeah, not yeah. so little. It's actually quite... Oh, well, yeah. Big. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the original, especially, it's large. The, 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 oh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But the one that's inside the uh, Hyundai is still large enough for a very small journalist to shove themselves inside of. Um, so it, you know what I mean? Like I a, think Tommy tried to cl- climb in there. Tommy could probably pull a grasshopper move and get in there, but yeah. I don't know if he'll get out. The point is, is that, uh, so Hyundai followed that approach because there was room to do that. Ford decided not to do that. Um, but also Ford has a couple other things going on. So, uh, the tailgate, the height, the overall build of the vehicle and its entry price, which we don't have for Hyundai yet, but Ford is hitting around 20 grand for their front wheel drive hybrid pickup, meaning that you guys in the city who are looking for a really cheap way of moving some cargo around may just have a vehicle coming your way. I'm extremely excited for these truck well, yeah. pickups. Yeah, and, and I am too. And uh, so why put them on the Ike? And I think the answer is uh, we want to find out, and I think you guys are also want to find out, what is it like in the real world? Can right. I go to Colorado or can I go to other, you know, mountainous areas around the country? Can I tow my little camper with me? Can I do this? Can right. I do that? So we want to verify that. Right. So we do have a few uh, trailers that we can hook up to it, uh, to these vehicles and tow a realistic load. One that pushes the vehicle to its limits because we intend to. That's the point of doing the Ike but also not being stupid about it. We're not going to overload these vehicles. We're just gonna get them up to a certain point. And that's really important for the consumer who's actually interested in doing occasional towing. Because even if it's an activity vehicle, maybe you wanna bring a little trailer, some motorcycles or whatever with. Or if it's a small little pickup like the um, Maverick, maybe you wanna actually take a load that uh, might have some lumber on it. The point is, is that we wanna put that load to the test. One more thing about that too, Mm -hmm. to keep in mind. We are probably not going to do the Ike with the front wheel drive hybrid version of the Maverick because that has the lowest towing numbers. Of oh, two, 2,000. And I am pretty sure they wouldn't even send it, send it to us. Or maybe they will with no hitch. <laughs> that would be right. Yeah. So uh, manufacturers sometimes do that. Yeah, we, we've had that happen many times, especially with vehicles that they you know brag about towing. Uh, so we'll most likely will be doing that test with the turbocharged version of and, the Ford and probably all wheel drive version with all wheel drive, which is their maximum tower, which will pull up to four thousand pounds. So yes. that makes total sense. That's probably what we're going to do. Also with the Hyundai, get whatever vehicle they have that has the maximum towing capability. And you know we're not expecting a lot. We just want to see what it does in terms of gas mileage. We want to see how they tow up a steep grade. What there's or, or down a steep grade or down the steep grade, yeah. um, and we'll probably if 3,500 pounds. We'll have to use our remote um, if we go over 3,500. So, so right? yeah, but but by the way, Ford said uh, they're, with their towing package, they're including a brake controller. Really, yes. I didn't catch that part. Yes, they did. No kidding. Uh, so Hyundai, I don't think is. 
but but we also have our uh, remote control brake controller, right? Uh, which is a Prodigy RF. So if you guys want to learn more about this, we we have videos about that. That is correct. And they're not so, paying us to say that, by the way. No, no, we purchased that. Right, ourselves. we bought it, and yeah. it's it's actually it's pretty good for what it is. It's pretty good. Yeah, and it's actually convenient for us because we have one trailer and many vehicles. Mm -hmm. So if that's your situation too, where you have one trailer but maybe a couple of different SUVs, then you can uh, just bring it from one to the other and just pop yeah. it in there, and you're good to go. Yeah. And um, in this case, what what is the, what is the legal limit to, to have a brake controller? So uh, it varies by state. Yeah. So for example, in Colorado, it's 3,000 pounds. It is 3,000. Okay. As soon as you go over that, you're required to have brakes on your trailer. Right. Um, in Cal California, it's actually lower than that. It is lower. Okay. Yeah. So, and other states vary, you know, mm. Texas, Florida. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have all of that in my head. You think Florida wouldn't even care. But it's always smart to do, right? Right. Safety, right? Safety is the most important thing. Yeah, my point is, and by the way, Florida, I wasn't putting Florida down. It's just that they don't have any mountains, really. Uh, I think their highest elevation is 200 feet. Uh, so it's just a very different thing. But it doesn't matter. The point is, is that, you know, we, we follow the law here in Colorado, meaning that if we're doing a 3,500 or higher load on a trailer, we need to make sure that trailer has brakes. It must have brakes, yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, and then the electric trucks, I, I think that's kind of hard to talk about right now because we, we don't have do a lot of physical, you know, you know, we don't have the trucks, first of all. We need to do a lot of, you know, logistical thinking about how we're going to do this, where we're going to charge these things, how it's all going to work, because we just don't know yet. And it's kind of cool to have that mystery because it's, it's something new yeah. you haven't had to worry about before. And there is some chargers up there in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tesla has a station up there. Yeah, we can't use anything from Tesla. Exactly. Um, uh, Unless the Cybertruck arrives, right? Right. Uh, or there's other, like, Electrify America stations. You know, there's there a couple up there. There are a couple up there now. And most of them don't accept trailers, right? They're, they're kind of a pull-in type where you can't really put a trailer in there. So the point is we'd have to disconnect the trailer right. in order to go up and juice up in most of these stations. But we will have a very detailed comparison chart. You know, how much, how many kilowatts did we use or kilowatt hours did we use on the way up? Right. How much did we recharge on the way down? Yep. We've done the Tesla Model X test similar to this. Yes, we did. And it, it went all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Considering all things considered. Well, we were one of the first to really give that a go. And we now know how difficult it is on a vehicle that really isn't a full-blown truck. Yes. Now, we're, in the near future, we're getting things like the F-150, which has a frame. And as a truck, and these other ones, they say, will be trucks, so to speak, in terms of their capability. So what we need to do is figure out the route. It'll probably have to be a little bit different, I would imagine, than the regular Ike Gauntlet. But we'll still be able to get all of that data that we normally get on the Ike on top of more data. Yes, and also that's the big question everybody has. Range, 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 range. range. Yeah. So we'll validate that. And, Especially and going up and over a hill like the one we're going to be doing, which Massive, is a tough mountain. hill. Yeah. That's going to absolutely murder range. So it's going to be interesting to see how these trucks handle it. Well, there you have it, guys. So I think from the recent tests, you see that Ram performed really well. Yeah. Uh, we have more coming, you know, especially with Chevy and Ford. And uh, as soon as we get new trucks like the Frontier, uh -huh. uh, updated trucks from every manufacturer, you'll see more of this and it'll be on our websites as well. And Plus, we're eventually going to be getting our hands on a Tundra. Uh, the new one, you, yeah, 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 the brand new one. So, I mean, there's so much stuff coming right around the corner. There you have it, guys. So, thank you. You can get the podcast in uh, audio form mm -hmm. everywhere on Apple Podcasts and everywhere podcasts are distributed. And TFL Talk, of course, is our YouTube channel. That is correct. But I don't understand why they want to go to an audio when they can have an opportunity to look at this handsome face. Yes, uh, please look at Nathan. I was referring to Andre. <laughs> Come on, that's a Clooney haircut. Oh, thank you. I really, uh, <laughs> uh, I really appreciate that. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time.